Hello, we join you today off the beach of Sanibel Island, Florida. We have previously showed you videos of our ordering process, the delivery, and our first long road trip. Now today we're going to take this truck and use it for what a truck's meant to be used for. We're going to be going on a 1400 mile, eight day, seven night camping trip, going back from Florida to Ohio. So come along and join us. Welcome back to eHermes, your electric adventure travel channel. Please remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and hit that bell button to be notified of our upcoming content. We are leaving Sanibel Island with 187 miles of range, 77% battery. Colt Creek State Park will be our stop for the night. It is 148 miles away, so we would not need to stop and charge. But we are going to stop, I believe, and go to the Walmart to pick up some supplies anyhow. So we'll be heading up to Colt Creek State Park. It's about three hours away, and we'll show you some of our camping setup when we get there. So people think of Florida and they think beaches and high rises and all that stuff along the coast, but most of the state looks an awful lot like this. Farmland, grazing, scrub, uh, woodlands. This is kind of the real central Florida, which makes up the vast majority of the state actually. Colt Creek State Park. After reconsidering our route, we decided we did not need to charge or go to the store. If we need a few supplies, we'll get them close to the campsite. So we're gonna arrive at the campground with 67 miles worth, worth of range left. First things first, PIF, plug in first. So we are charging, even though we only have, I think 29% battery, by morning we should have whatever I set it to, which will probably be 80 or 85%. So tonight, uh, we're gonna be leaving fairly in the morning. It's supposed to rain, we're only here one night. There's not a great place to set a tent up on this site anyhow, except right by the road. And there's alligators around. Anyhow, uh, we're just gonna sleep in the truck tonight. Uh, because we're only here for one night. We have two level sleeping accommodations. Mrs. E. Hermes has chosen the floor with the air mattress. I will sleep on the seat. As far as sleeping goes, across the back seat is not the most comfortable, but for a night or two, it's fine. So we wake up this morning after being here about uh, 14 hours, cooking and running everything we used off the truck because it was the only thing we plugged into the pedestal out here. And here we are with 100% battery charge, actually, didn't mean to go that high, but it went a little faster than I thought. So we've got a full charge and we're ready to start the day. We are headed for General John Coffee State Park in Georgia. It says we have one charging stop for 20 minutes. I don't even think we'll have to be there that long because there'll be uh, power at our next campsite again. We're gonna stay off the interstates for the most part and take our time getting there. We've been driving for about 15 miles now through this. Not a house, not a road. There was a forest service driveway nothing. We're in central Florida. I bet we're only 40 miles from Orlando, believe it or not. But it is barren. Well, not barren. It is lush, but it is very desolate. Even though we have more than enough charge, in fact, we're over 50% to get to our campground for tonight, we're driving through Lake City, Florida anyhow, and there's Electrify America station here at a grocery store, and we need groceries. So we're gonna go ahead and stop here in Lake City, Florida for a charge while we get groceries. So the good news is even at 54%, we're getting 129 kilowatts, so we're getting good charging speeds. The bad news is the grocery store turns out to be a convenience store truck stop. Well, we still need to go grocery shopping, but we will have to do it in the state of Georgia because we are leaving Florida and entering Georgia at this time. We are about 80 miles from our campsite. Hopefully we go buy another store because that was not a grocery store by any stretch of the imagination. We have the GPS settings set for shortest distance and we are not blocking dirt roads. So this is what we get. And here we are at General John Coffee State Park. 
We currently have 89 miles of range. It says we're two miles from our campsite. So we'll have 87 miles of range, which is about 35%. So kind of similar to last night. We'll get plugged in and by morning we will be full again. We pulled into the campsite last night with about 40% state of charge uh, right around 100 miles of projected range uh, we plugged in and we charged overnight I had the charge limit set to 95% sometime through the night it shut off when we reached 95% so today we're going to Plains Georgia and back a round trip of about uh, 250 miles we will buy, drive by one charger we may or may not use it we certainly won't need to use it uh, that's the beauty of camping in this at campgrounds that have uh, 50 amp 240 volt outlets I will say the Pro Power on board last night really saved us because the regular 120 volt 20 amp outlet at the campsite did not work. And since we cook with electric hot plate and electric coffee maker, we would have been unable to use any of those because that outlet didn't work. The GFI tripped on it and wouldn't reset. But we were able to use the outlets and the Pro Power on board and do all of our business, all of our cooking business. And this morning uh, we cooked uh, breakfast and made a couple cups of coffee after I had unplugged the vehicle and it used 1% of the battery. So I think if you had a decent charge when you went somewhere boondocking, you'd be all right using the Pro Power on board. Plains has a quaint small town main street, has preserved the old train station that was used as a campaign headquarters, and has turned the old school into a museum about the Carter campaign and presidency. Of course, you have to see the smiling peanut on the outskirts of town and Brother Billy's gas station right across from Main Street. Mrs. E. Hermes was uh, concerned that we would be arrested, so we did not get any closer to the Carter homestead, uh, current, where they currently live, uh, in Plains. Uh, he is 97 years old. I believe she's a couple years younger. They both live in a house uh, down just past this gate that they built when he was uh, first came back from the Navy, right out of college, in the Naval Academy to be precise. If it's an E. Hermes adventure, you know there's going to be a winery involved. In order to get to Plains from Interstate 75, you, dr you drive through the town of Americus, Georgia, which used to be the home of Habitat for Humanity, although somewhat at the Tourist uh, Visitors Bureau told us they've moved their offices to Atlanta. But in any case, they have the global Habitat Village of some of the different housing they build in different parts of the world. Unfortunately, by the time we got there, it was closed today, so we missed that. So we've currently driven about 150 miles today. We have about 100 miles back to the campground. We would not need to charge. We would make it there with a few miles to spare, but we are going to Walmart for some supplies. And there happens to be an Electrify America charger there, so we're going to plug in while we're shopping, but we're not going to stay any longer than it actually takes us in the store because we don't really need to be there. We're just going to take advantage of it because it's there and just to give us a little buffer. So we charged to 81% last night, which is almost enough to make it to our total. Here's the circle of range. Uh, we're gonna stop one time to charge, probably while we have lunch. If I had charged to 90% or 100%, we might have made it all the way, I don't know. But we have to stop for lunch anyhow, so this is not a big deal. It'll probably be maybe a 15 minute charge, and then that will get us to the campsite. We stopped in, I believe, it's Dublin, Georgia, at Dunkin' Donuts to get some coffee. And what did we have right next door but a charge point, 62.5 kW uh, charger, which is pretty fast. That's um, anything over 50 is considered, in my mind, a fast charger. So this is a, this is a really good charger, just random here along the highway. So we uh, went and got our coffee, went and got some ice for the cooler, uh, and we've added about 20 miles of range, which uh, probably is going to get us at least to Athens and now probably to Commerce. We won't even have to stop in Athens. So this little stop uh, that we had to stop for the coffee and the ice anyhow really uh, is gonna save us some time and charging. So we got 50 miles for, I don't know, four and a quarter, 410, 412, something like that. Unless your car gets 50 miles to the gallons, this is a pretty good deal. As you can see, we are just a little bit short of charge to get to the campground. But we have to stop at Walmart to get dinner for tomorrow night and breakfast for tomorrow the next day anyhow. So there's a Electrify America DC fast charger at the Walmart Supercenter on Interstate 85 and US 441 in Commerce. Uh, and so we're gonna stop there, 
plug in, buy our groceries, and by the time we come back out, we will have more than enough. So it will not any, add any time to our trip. So here's the problem. It actually charges too fast. We intended only to add about 20% of range at the most, but by the time we got done shopping, it was up to 76%. Now, it is true I could have shut it off remotely from the inside of the store, and I saw what was going on, but the charging rate here was extremely reasonable. I think it was 24 cents a kilowatt hour. That's uh, the best I've ever seen. So I just let it keep going. It's campground, it's kind of free, but this is pretty close to that. I think the whole session was $10 for about a 50% battery increase. So that's a pretty good deal. So we had a bit of a scare. Uh, when we first came up to the campsite and turned turned this on, plugged the truck in, turned the breaker on, it came on blue like it is now, then red, then stayed yellow and would not charge. I tried a neighboring campsite to see if that was the issue. Um, I tried, this is the uh, 240 50 amp. I tried the 120 volt 15 amp adapter cord. Nothing would work. So we did some checking. We had plenty of power, so it wasn't going to be an issue. I let it sit for a while. I played with it. I turned it upside down to look at some of the part numbers on it. I turned everything back on and now it's working fine, but having it not work for a while and then start to work doesn't fill me with the greatest confidence. Here we are at Tallulah Falls State Park in Northeast Georgia, finally starting to do some of the fun stuff. We're gonna hike down into the canyon, get some video down there and share that with you. Damn! No, really, it's a dam. No, no, there's a bounce. Let's swing sideways. That's worse. I'll have to do the math and add them all up, but somehow it seems like about a thousand. We climbed up from all the way down there. Back to this elevation. We have not one falls. Not two falls. But three. Three water falls. We might as well see what it can do. The thing about off-roading with an electric vehicle is because you're going so slow you use very little energy so uh, getting the thought of getting stranded somewhere because you run out of battery out in the woods is pretty misguided because the efficiency is so good you're going so slow you're barely using any of the battery so you could go long 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 ways. We are leaving this morning with 84% charge. It was actually 85. We drove around the campgrounds a couple times. That's what I had it set to last night. We did still have some problems with the charger. It worked good all night to 85%. I tried to top it off this morning and it wouldn't work. So again, it seems to work in the evenings here, but not through the day. It doesn't make sense. I don't know if it's something with the power supply here or the charger itself. We'll find out when we get to Pipes, Pipestem State Park, our next stop. So our next stop is Pipe Stem State Park in West Virginia. I believe we have two charging stops to get there. We're going through Asheville, North Carolina, Virginia, and into West Virginia. According to the 
circle of range, we could make it all the way to the campsite. Because we had some charging issues at the last campsite, we're going to go ahead and stop here in Wytheville, Virginia again and get a pretty deep charge because this is West Virginia. And we all know that once we leave Wytheville, we have to get all the way to Cambridge, Ohio to the next fast charger. So my plan was to make sure we go up here and we, in um, Pipestem State Park, we charge overnight and we have a full charge when we leave. It'll shorten the distance, although it's still probably 240 or 50 miles. Um, but if we can't charge for whatever reason, I don't want to have to have a long time at a level two charger somewhere up further in the state. So we're gonna get a deep charge, have some lunch, and then go to the campground. packed up from our final campsite ready to head back on the last leg home we'll be leaving here from pipe stem state park in the southern tip of west virginia which means we have the whole state of west virginia to drive but we are not concerned because we have a full 100 percent charge from the campsite overnight 270 miles of range i think it's only about 240 miles to the cambridge Ohio DC fast charger so we can go full speed we don't have to worry about our speed we don't have to have any concerns about our range we are good to go we're never happy to end a trip but in order to plan the next one we have to end the first one so we're headed back home we'll have some final thoughts and wrap this up here we are back at the electrify America DC fast charger at the Walmart Supercenter in Cambridge Ohio we drove 254 miles. Uh, still says we have 30 to go. Actually, I think we have a little more than that because it says we still have 14% range on the battery. At 30 miles, I'd have to do some math. So we're gonna charge up here, go and use the restroom, and then we'll be heading for home. But it does go to show that you can make that distance, especially if you have a full charge between uh, Waitheville, Virginia and Cambridge, Ohio. Here we are back home after our eight day, seven night odyssey that ended up covering 1,764 miles. Regrettably, I did not keep track of all the efficiency in miles per kilowatt hour, but I did keep track of my charging costs. We charged at seven DC fast chargers, six Electrify America and one charge point and spent a grand total of $86.08 to cover the 1,764 miles. At a generous 20 miles per gallon, it would take 88 gallons of gas or $370 to cover that same distance in a full-size gasoline-powered truck. This was a much more relaxed and enjoyable trip than the mad dash coming down to Florida from Ohio. This trip showed how you can minimize your charging costs and time while charging overnight at campgrounds with full hookups. However, our next video will be a demonstration of how the Pro Power on board can supply all of your energy needs while camping in a remote wilderness with no power or anything else for miles around. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we post that video. Thank you.